A river of scarlet, a lifeline unseen, within your veins, a crimson stream. I bring life, but embody death, without me, you'll bear no breath. What am I? Mountains of corpses, rivers of blood. In today's video, we're going to be bleeding our way through Elden Ring using a unique class known as the Blood Flame Initiate. Now, ladies and gentlemen, or should I say gentlemen, because let's be real, no females actually watch this game. You're probably wondering who the Blood Flame Initiate is and why you've never seen it before. That's because this class is only available in Elden Ring's Convergence mod, which is basically a revamped version of the base game that adds unique weapons, bosses, and updated areas. But that's enough waffling from me. And without further ado, let's hop into the run. First things first, we gotta give ourselves a theme-related name to ensure maximum blood loss upon our enemies. Bloody... Clock. Yeah, that's a good name. Nice one. Real classy, buddy. We then, of course, make our entire character the color of blood, because I'm all about sticking to the theme. Ain't that right, bloody cock? I then make my way into the lands between, where I aptly spawn at the Rose Church, which is swimming in pools of blood. I then check out the path of the Blood Initiate to find out exactly where to go to strengthen my build. The Blood Initiate primarily uses Faith and Arcane with fire damage. The following locations have Blood Flame Spell Ruins, Shimmering Rune of Blood Flame, Rodan's Catacomb, Glowing Rune of Blood Flame, Riot Blood Ruins, Shining Rune of Blood Flame, Landel Catacombs, and Radiant Rune of Blood Flame, Moog, the Lord of Blood. That makes sense. And then we'll check out some of the the weapons. Okay, Rodubia, Standard, Surgeon's Catlinger, that sounds new, Bloody Hellas, Morgoth's Curse Sword, Eleonora's Pole Blade, I love that weapon, uh, Mogwin's Sensor, that's got to be a new one, of course Mogwin's Sacred Spear, Sword of Milos, Vars, Bouquet, Rivers of Blood, don't know if we'll use that, and Mogwin's Seal. Before making my way to acquire the first Blood Flame rune, I use my chosen keepsake, the Warding Remnant, to craft myself the Stalwart Horn Charm, granting me full immunity to bleed, which I had a hunch would definitely come in handy later on in the run. I then made my way over to the Rodin's Catacombs, which is actually a place I'd never been before, so I'm not sure if it always looked like this or if the Convergence people changed it to make it look all blood themed. Anywho, at this point I only had very weak and pitiful blood spells, and this was a surprisingly challenging for a first dungeon. They even had one of those terrifying bird monstrosities found in Mogwin Palace that no one ever bothers to kill, unless they're farming for runes of course. And as you can see, I was not too pleased about this enemy placement. Wait, there's one of these in here? What the fuck dude? Oh my, that... okay. Oh my god, this is way too soon to be fighting one of these. Bruh. <laughs> What? How's that hitting me? Okay, I'm just gonna run past this dude. I'm not fighting that. Yeah, wise choice, buddy boy. I eventually made my way to the end of the dungeon and found myself face to face with a bloody crucible knight of all things, this early in the game. Lol, just kidding. It was only a cute little spirit caller snail, who I swiftly beat to a pulp to pick up my first blood flame rune. Let's check out what this gives us, shall we? Okay, and there we go. Get the shimmering rune of blood flame. Nice. Blood Boon Spray, Dynastic Replenishment, Boiling Blood, Purifying Cordery. Thrust the arm to the body of Formless Mother, then scatter the Blood Flame to set the area ablaze. Charging increases potency, this incantation costs 5% of FP. Okay, that's like Moog's move. Dynastic Replenishment, open a channel within your own flesh to the Formless Realm, continuously restoring 14 HP per second. Okay, that's really good, that's just a nice buff to keep the, keep the blood flowing. Send a projectile forward towards enemies that inflicts a curse on the, upon impact. Target takes continuous damage over the duration. Their fire absorption is lowered by 20% and their bleed resistance is lowered by 50%. Okay, that's just a really nice like debuff on the enemies. With my new spells acquired, I traversed my way to Limgrave, where I made short work of the Erdry Avatar. This allowed me to teleport to the one in Caled, who was forced to vanquish before I could vacate the area. Being in Caled, we then of course cheesed both Grail and the Knight's Cav, and started pumping levels into Faith, HP, and Arcane. HP would be especially important in this run, as I would later learn that most of the blood spells use chunks of your HP as well as your FP whenever you cast them. I also made a quick pit stop to pick up Reduvia. Yeah, fuck you. Not to actually use it, but mainly to add to the build's aesthetic. To get our next blood flame rune, I had to take a quick teleport trip to Altus Plateau, where I was forced to take down this blighted omen, Oaf, and his gang of henchmen. I trimmed the fat with a couple of blood boon sprays and utilized the same strategy to take down the omen himself. I had to be especially cautious and play this fight very slowly. Nice, good damage, good night, bitch. Okay, cool. With that out the way, I made my way over to the Rithe Blood Ruins, which didn't go as smoothly as I'd hoped. Those blood doggers do be doing some damage. 
Thanks, Doggo. Thanks for being a bloody asshole. Sipping on my coffee for strength, I managed to find my way down and come face to face with my main man, the Sanguino Noble, who I subsequently clapped without his consent, by the way. Oh, he's aggressive, okay. Sangui Noble does not fuck around. Okay, he does get cooked by this, though. Oh yeah, he gets cooked. Oh yeah, okay. Sorry. Blood Boon Spray is just cooking him. Look at that. <laughs> Shame he can't actually do anything. Oh wait, I don't have any FP. Oh, and he's stuck in it again, and he gets bled. And, um... Okay, wait, this is actually really good. He's just getting a black... He can't do shit. I know he's not the black strongest boss in the world, but damn. Hit him with one of these, and that should finish him, yeah. Oh, die, please. And then we'll just finish him with the jumper, I think. Yeah. Here we trade him. Goodbye, Sanguine Noble. I then proceeded to the chest in the back room, where I got what we came for. The glowing rune of Blood Flame, as well as the bloody Hellas, as an added bonus. Blood Boon Slash, Sanguine Pull, Blood Flame Outburst, Dynastic Sacrament. Okay, let's go have a look at all those. Slash open a rift into the formless realm and send a projectile of burning blood forward towards foes, dealing damage and causing bleeding. This incantation can be cast repeatedly. It costs 15% of total F HP. Okay, that's quite a lot. Violently rip blood from the body of a foe in front of you and pull it into your own, dealing damage to the enemy and restoring 25% of your total HP upon impact. Okay, that's really good. I like that. Uh, causes a large outburst of flaming blood emitting from your own body, dealing damage and causing bleeding. Tar charging increases potency. This incantation costs 15% of total HP. Okay, we got a lot of cool stuff to play around with. Restores 100% of total FP and stamina. This incantation costs 25% of total HP and causes bleed buildup on you. Okay, so just restores your FP using HP, which is actually really cool. The build was starting to come together at this point, but we still needed two more runes, and maybe a better armor set before it was complete. The next place to explore was the Landell Catacombs, which is always a fun time. No! Oh! Shit! I didn't even see that move actually. What the? I fucking hate these lobsters dude. Eventually, I managed to sneak my way through Lobsterville, and navigate my way through the dungeon to find Esgar, the Priest of Blood, waiting for me. I did manage to do this fight first time, and I honestly don't know how, because it's pretty tough. The two doggos relentlessly barrel towards you, and Esgar himself is no slouch. With a little bit of tiptoeing, and a lot of bum clenching however, I managed to whittle him down, nice and easy. Uh oh, he's, he used the same spell against me. That's not fair. Okay, oh my god, this is horrifying. I think that's how we get the dogs down with these. Oh my god. Oh! <laughs> this shit. Okay, we got one dog down, that's good. Okay, the other one's almost dead. Oh my! Please die. This battle is tough, dude. Okay, we got. Okay, the dogs are down, but this is still not gonna be easy. No, don't kill me. Okay, we just gotta go for it. Come on! <laughs> that was very stressful. Okay, and there we pick up the shiny rune of Blood Flame. Which gives me Outer Realm's Gift, Hex of Mogwin, Blood Flame Missile. Jeez, that sounds pretty good. And Blood Flame Scatter. Let's check those out. Quickly fling a spray of flaming blood before you dealing damage and causing bleeding. This incantation can be cast in rapid succession and costs 20% of total F. 20%? That's crazy. Attune your body with the realm of the formless, increasing all fire damage deal by 5% and restoring 8 HP for, per second lasts for 2 minutes. Okay, so that's pretty good. That's just an upgrade to, I think, dynastic replenishment. Wait, that one gives you 14 HP and this one gives you 8. Okay, it's not as good, but it gives you more fire damage. Wrap a foe in rings of the luminary, causing continuous bleed buildup for 80 seconds. This incantation costs 20%. Okay, that's just a better boiling blood, I think. I was pretty sure that this mysterious teleporter would then take me to Mogwin Palace, as that was the way it had worked in my other class videos. I really do like how the parts connect so fluidly. Anyway, I arrived at my final destination, but we were still weak, very weak. So before taking on Michaelis Pedo, I decided to beef up a little bit. I did this by picking up the Sanguine Noble set, which granted us passive HP regen, which was huge for a build like this. It also gave us some bonus faith and arcane. 
I then doubled back to Altus to pick up a new whip called the Surgeon's Catlinger, which is kind of dog shit on its own. However, it gives us an additional 10% boost to blood flame incantations, which meant it was a no brainer to carry in my offhand. I then used a Nerd Tree Teleporter to take myself to the mountaintops of the Giants, as I needed to pick up a battle seal from Okina, the Rivers of Blood Virgin. It was during this fight that I discovered the true goat of this build, Blood Flame Outburst. It was absurdly good and honestly quite dumb. Just look at how it ravages Okina, giving him no chance to fight back. Okay, except that time, fucking dirty Rivers of Blood user. But we came back and taught him a lesson about what happens to OP weapon abusers. I then picked up Mogwin's seal and upgraded that, and the surgeon's catling as best I could, and with that, I felt like I was ready to take on Moog himself. Nicola is mine and mine alone. I was unfortunately still kind of out of my depth for this fight. I'm honestly quite shit at the combat in Elden Ring, having no prior Souls game experience, and I really lack the patience that is necessary for some fights. Consequently, I really struggled to finish Moog off in his second phase, even though I had full bleed immunity. It wasn't until after I was extremely frustrated after a couple deaths that I had to rethink my strategy about how to take him down. I came to the conclusion that direct damage spells wouldn't cut it, as I'd run out of either FP or HP too quickly. Ironically, the best strategy was to use a debuff combination of Hex of Mogwin and Boiling Blood to ensure I was constantly proccing blood loss, and to top that off, with a couple sanguine pills here and there to make sure I kept my own HP flowing. For those of you who don't know, the Lord of Blood is weak to blood loss of all things, which just goes to show how pathetic Moog really is in comparison to his superior twin, Morgoth. Anyway, we managed to outsmart him and take him down in the end to pick up our final Radiant Rune of Blood Flame. Okay, the strut is not going badly, we're getting blow. Ow. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, I need to heal up that one. Yeah, you can steal some more HP from him. Another the boiling blood. And another Hex of Mogwin. Excellent. Now we run the fuck away from him. Okay, I need a heal from him. Thank you. I need to re-debuff him. Okay, he got a bleed blood there. Okay, hit boiling blood. Another Hex of Mogwin. I do need to steal some more HP. I need my FP to regen now, thank you. Ow. Okay, we're getting him very low. This is good. He did hit me there, but... Okay, this was the strat. It's working. Oh! <gasps> yes! Okay, <laughs> we got a blood proc there. Okay, that was just... You see, I just gotta use my brain. That was a good strat. Blood rain, knee heal, blood pack, and hidden mother's blessing. Okay, those look really cool. A powerful incantation of Moog, Moog Blood Luminary. Open a portal to the formless realm above your head, which rains flaming blood upon enemies, dealing damage and causing bleeding. This incantation costs 60% of FP, of HP. That is insane. So if you use it twice, you just die. Um, okay, but it looks pretty OP. That's the sort of the move he uses. And then, of course, knee heal. A masterful technique of Moog, Blood Luminary, conjure the sacred dynastic trident and pierce the formless veil, instantly dealing damage and bleeding all enemies in a large area around you while simultaneously restoring your HP. This can be cast in rapid succession. Okay, that sounds excellent. And then Blood Pact, I think, is a buff, either uh, Incantation or uh, Melee buff. Which one's which? At this point, the build was now complete, and it was time to start taking on bosses. And who better to test the full power of the Blood Initiate on other than Margit the Fell? Put these foolish ambitions to rest. As Margit is usually a pushover in most runs, this fight was all about testing out my new spells and how they interacted with the rest of the build. Now we Blood Rain. Okay, doesn't go away, doesn't happen straight away. Okay, that is pretty strong. Let's try knee heal. Knee heal is just knee heal. <laughs> Let me try a blood flame missile. Ow. This might actually kill me if I use it, but let's just see. Oh, okay, that's pretty strong. If I use another one, I'm dead. Let's try out another blood rain. Up. <laughs> Okay, 68. 60 percent of your HP is a lot. I don't think it would do that much. Idiot boy. Let's try that again, shall we? Can I hit it from here? Yes. 
Okay, that is dumb and broken. Hit another one. Yep, okay. That is way too much damage. Another Blood Fang missile. Dodge away. Oh, you got me now. Let's finish him with a missile. Boom. Good night. Okay. I really like this build. Like, you gotta be really aware. You can die very easily. This was definitely shaping up to be my favorite class in the Convergence mod. The raw damage output potential just seemed to be insane, and I'm all about that life. But this was only the beginning. Of course, as per any run, after Margaret comes Godric the Grafted. Lowly tarnished, thou art unfit even to graft. Of course, everyone knows this pitiful loser is the weakest of all the demigods, and weak indeed he proved to be, putting up even less of a fight than Margaret and getting completely annihilated by raining blood. GG is, Godric. GG is. Now when he gets close, I'm gonna blood... Let me actually just blood right now. Oh yeah. Okay, that does an absurd amount. Okay, blood rain on him again. And heal up. And then we're just gonna run up him and blood rain again. Oh, it's still raining. Okay, now we rain on him again. Should do an immense amount of damage. Okay, yep, that's a lot. I wonder if I use it again if I'll die. I probably will. Let me just Sanguine pull. And then I can Blood Plum again. Blood Rain. Uh oh. Touch there. Oh, this is a good combo. Sanguine pull and Blood Rain. I like that. Uh oh. Oh, okay. Holy <laughs> shit. Okay. Okay, Blood Rain with Sanguine pull. Uses all my HP, but then I just get straight back and that. Yo, he got obliterated. Yep, the Blood Rain and Sanguine Pull combo seemed to be especially dirty. It allowed me to output immense damage, with little to no penalty considering how easily I could heal back the HP without wasting any Crimson Flasks. Ah, how I love to abuse OP strategies. At this point, it was time to move my way up in the world to bigger and better demigods. But before taking on Rodan, I had to take down Mr. Dak, the Starcaller. I still can't believe this dude's name is Dak. Worst name ever. Even though it seemed Dak was immune to blood loss, he wasn't too difficult of a boss, and after defeating him, it is time to take on the true Starcaller Lord, General Radan. I am General Radan Bibbulbap. Okay, watch, I'm gonna dodge this arrow without looking. Hang on. Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> nice try, buddy. Okay, then we'll hit him with boiling blood, Hexamogwin, and then rain blood on him. And he should get obliterated. Boiling blood. Hexamogwin. And blood rain. Oh yeah. Just let him stand in there. Oh yeah. I already know what's going on. Then hit him with this. Oh no, we're gonna die. Wait. Gotta be careful. Okay, steal his HP. Okay, now he's getting out of there. Okay, and now we rain blood on him. And then heal up from him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And blood flame off first. <laughs> Woo! Now that's a lot of damage. Nice and easy does the trick. I was really starting to get the hang of the build. The fact that this build required you to focus on your HP, FP, and stamina management simultaneously kept me really engaged during this run, and I was really starting to enjoy myself. The only thing standing in our way of conquering the superior Omen Brother was a new boss called Segur, the Knight's Captain. He's a great addition to the game. He's not too challenging, but his mace hits you like a truck, so you do need to be careful. I'll let you see how the rest of the fight panned out, as it had an unexpected but satisfying end to it. Okay, it's missing him, we gotta get back in. Oh my. Okay, getting good bleeds, gotta steal some HP from him now. Leveling. Go hide behind here to avoid those. Oh. 
Ow, that did a lot. Okay, he sort of glitched out there. It's just fine. Hit him with this. Ah. Uh, oh, wait. I think we got him. Did we get him? Yeah, we did. <laughs> okay, we'll take it. We will take it. The power of fire and bleed, man. Putting in the work, even after death. Heading over to Morgoth, I thought this might be a little bit challenging as he was recently buffed in the Convergence mod to be a little bit stronger, considering he's supposed to be the 4th Keystone of the Forge, but everyone was killing him before getting the 3rd Keystone because of how easy he was. But alas, he was no match for the power of blood, and was arguably the easiest boss we had done so far. Besides Godric, of course. Fuck that guy, stupid weak ass little pussy bitch. It's a knee heal him. Okay, now I hit him with a Blood Flame Missile. Okay, let's try to get off a of Blood Rain here. Okay, I'm very low, so I just gotta be careful. Oh yeah, he's getting cooked. <laughs> he is getting cooked, and we'll knee heal him. Steal his HP, thanks buddy. And let's we'll finish him with a Dagger, maybe. Oh no, wait, he's actually got a lot of HP, and the Dagger does nothing. Okay, don't finish him off with the Dagger. Let's finish him off with the knee heal. True Lord of Blood style. Yeah. <laughs> that was very easy. Wow. Okay, this might be my fastest run ever. At this point, I was feeling way too overconfident and felt like I could just blood rain my way to victory with minimal effort. But there were still ways to go, and the crumbling Faramazula awaited me. The way you get there in the Convergence mod is pretty cool, and I like it much better. You need to go behind Garang's Bestial Sanctum, and there you'll find a new boss arena, blocking your way to the teleporter that'll take you to Faram. This arena belongs to the legendary BBK, an iconic and hard-hitting boss who is not to be fucked with, except that I did fuck with him. There's a way to cheese him very easily if you just stand on this bridge and he won't be able to hit you. The only way you can die here is to your own stupidity, which is exactly what happened to me. And I killed myself. Like a fucking idiot. Yes, yes you did. Losing an unlosable battle is pretty embarrassing, but eventually we cleaned him up. Took this teleporter to Faramazula, made short work of Sierra, the Blade of the Ancients, who is just a roided up Lion Guardian, but who isn't too difficult. Honestly, I'm just glad they replaced the Godskin Duo fight with literally anything. Anyway, it is now time for the biggest challenge of this run, Malekith. Thou who approacheth destined death. Destined death. The reason why Malekith felt like the most challenging boss for this build was because of how punishing destined death can be. Combine that with me constantly not being at full HP, just use my spells, and it's a recipe for disaster. He just kept clobbering me over and over. I tried many different things, like knee healing behind the pillars, which worked well for Garank, but pitifully for Malekith, considering walls mean nothing to him and that blade just cuts through literally everything. After some thinking, I realized that the spells I was using were too focused on high risk, high reward. Knee heal left you standing still for too long, and blood rain just eliminated half of your HP instantly. So I decided to switch to a more reliable and safe form of damage, which I found in Blood Flame Scatter. A spell that you could cast very quickly without eating up too much of your HP was what I had been missing, and I used it to bring Marika's dog down. Woof woof. Good bleed proc. Okay, nice. Can't see shit. Okay, hey, it's fine. Don't know how we got away with that, but I'll take it. Get some hits off with a dagger. And with boiling blood, I think. No, I should not have dived into that. Nice. Okay, I can heal up here. Cool, that catches me. Okay, I'll get Hex of Morgan back on again. And missed, I think. Final hit on Blood Plane of Scatter. Another one. Heal up. I'm dead. Oh my god, I survived that. Sanguine pull. Okay, we'll take that. 
Maybe Sanguine Pulse just to play it because it bleeds him and it just heals me up. Okay, come on. Almost got him. Sanguine Pull. Okay. Scatter. And we'll finish on with a dagger. Yes, there we go. Finally. Holy shit. Took way too long. Okay, this build is not good for Malekith, because it drains too much of your HP, and then he just one-shots you. It was either that, or I'm just straight dog shit. One of the two. Anyway, we're really nearing the end now, but before heading to the Ashen capital, we gotta light up that forge, baby. And the only way to do that is by squashing the fire giant. But he was kind of pathetic. Nihil was just straight up cheating in this fight because of how far away you can cast it and because of how many openings you get for Fire Giant, so I'm not going to show much of this. A more worthy opponent came in the form of Scard, the Crucible Betrayer. The best part about Scard is that he does us all a favor by skewering Gideon from behind, lol. I always loved that interaction so much. But after my last two runs, I was getting better at this Scard fight and it wasn't too challenging. He is getting stunned by everything, which is nice, but the fact that his shield can block a fucking cloud of rain from above is dumb. Okay, maybe we just blood boon spray him to death. Get a cheeky hit in. Ow. Ow. Tail do damage, tail do lots of damage, heal up. Bloodbone spree. Ow! That is really annoying. Oh! <laughs> Got played midair, wow. Well, we'll take that. Okay, we can just stagger him with blood, blood boon spray and hopefully that gets bleed on him. Wow, he's actually stuck. Okay, and he gets bleed on him. Oh, he's legitimately, I think he's stung by Shame, poor guy. Oh, he's trying to get close to me. He's getting closer, but then... <laughs> this is a ridiculous interaction. Like, I'm doing no damage to him until I bleed him. But... Just can't do anything. Okay. This should be enough. Because he actually can't really do much. As long as I just get the bleeds off, then he's fucked. Oh. Ow! Oh, there we go. Last bleed. For someone who I thought was so difficult, you can actually cheese him quite hard with a lot of spells. As tough as Scott can be, it seems there's at least one spell in every build that just renders him useless. In my last run, it was Carrion Swarm, and in this one, it was Blood Boon Spray. The melee battles against them are probably going to be quite tough though. But with that, I was down to the final three before I was crowned the true Lord of Blood. Long and hard didst thou fight, tarnished warrior. At this point in the editing process, the real me was feeling very burnt out, and honestly couldn't be asked to write more scripts and record any proper voiceovers. So I'm just going to let you guys enjoy the last few fights happening in real time. If you guys enjoyed this vid, a like would be hugely appreciated. And here we go. Ow. Heal up here. Okay, and with a blood scatter. Okay. I think I should get it for blood rain. I'm gonna heal instantly. Okay, nice, good damage. Just run away from there. Ow. Okay, run away. Oh god, you did a lot of damage. Hey, run away. I should get it for blood rain. Then heal. Okay, nice, good dodge. Nice. Okay, we're doing good damage. We can heal up. Okay, wait. Oh my god, okay, blood flame scatter. Okay, he's dead. Good night. There we go. Okay, one. Okay, 
Weil hier wird von... Okay. Okay, nice. Doing big damage, yeah. Okay, he's got for triple rings. Okay, now we're on. Ow. Okay, we're gonna punish this. Huge. Okay, come at me, bro. Ow. Nice. Huge. Okay, now we're gonna switch to Blood Rain, and I wonder how Blood Rain's gonna do against um, Elden Beast. Probably not that good, because he doesn't bleed. But let's just see. Okay, Blood Rain. Two thousand, okay, that's not really worth it. Okay, that was close. I think we're just gonna go with Blood Flame on first, it looks like. Ow. And miss. Oh, <laughs> I missed. Come at me, bruv. Okay, he's going for rings. Let's get out of here. I don't really know what's happening. Ow. Doing some damage. I'm gonna just wail on him with the. Okay. Doing decent damage. Oh, wait, we got a poison break, I think. Okay, nice. Gotta heal up there, though. Okay, one more. Missed. Okay, nice, huge poison break. Okay, we'll get that off. With the dagger, probably not gonna do much. Oh, I did a decent amount, and it protected me from the Elden Stars, which is big. Get a big one off. Nice. Okay, doing good damage here. Just gotta be careful. Okay, he's going up for rings. Noise. Noise. Okay, love him, Albus. We dodge there. Hit them all. Heal up. It's good damage. Ow. Okay. Get some damage in. Another heal. Okay, let's get this off. One, two, and we should be able to finish it, yeah. There we go. Whew! That's the stuff. We did it, baby. We did it, baby. We became the true Lord of Blood. Make sure to check out my last video where I tackled Elden Ring as a servant of a rot. Until next time, guys.